Okay, this is the first tutorial of generating components. And this one I'm gonna the goal for this tutorial is to teach to show some of the basic features inside generating components, since how to create a point. And then we're gonna start using some functions to replicate that point. And we're gonna move on into different to different features and we're going to start creating more stuff and so the first part the beginning I just want to say show quickly the different parts of Gen of GC and this is the the model view this is the where we're gonna model and this is the symbolic diagram where we're gonna see the connections between the features that we are creating here is where the transactions and this is the, the basic tools, the primary tools for GC is and this tool is very important, new features. Every time that we hit this is where we can create a new feature inside United Components. The transaction, this this area here is where we can start saving the file and we're gonna use it a lot in the beginning. I strongly recommend that to use it for for, so you can record all the steps of what you're doing and have more control of what you're doing. And well, let's start this tutorial. So we're going to place two points using the point tool. So this is point 0.01 and this is point 0.02. And to cancel that, that tool, we only have to click right button in the mouse and it's going to be cancelled and we're going to hit the first transaction if we hit play we're going to see that this is how we save what we did if I turn off this green button the points are going to go away and if I turn it on they're going to show up again right and something that is pretty important, and I want to say this in the beginning, is to start changing the names of everything that we create here. And the way that we, I'm going to show it now is by editing the feature. So if we hit the edit button here and we click on the bottom of one, we can here we're going to see this is the option for na name of feature. So instead of having 0.01, let's just type PT1. We're going to hit rename. And we're going to go here and we're going to change PT1. And instead of 0.02, let's change it PT2. Hit OK. And now we our points are PT1 and PT2. This is very useful. Now we have only have two points, but, but in the moment that we have like a bigger file and more complex design, and we're going to have a lot of features. And it's always very good to, to know the names of them and what are we doing. So the next thing that I want to that I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit PT2 and something that is very nice in genetic components is that one point can have different locations but it's still going to be the same the same element so here in Y translation if we change the value this is the, the coordinate of that point if we change this value for, let's say, we open curly braces and type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, hit OK, and we hit Apply, you're going to see that we create different points, but it's still the same point. It's a point 0 0.020, 0 0.021, 0 0.022, 0.023, and 4. And something that is 
very nice is that if we want to do something with these points, for example, if we want to create a line between this PD1 and this point, it's going to create a line from here to all the to all of them. So let's go to transactions, let's hit play, and let's do that. Let's create a line. So if we go to a new feature and we go line, we can choose. This is all the ways that you can create a line. So we're going to use by points. And it's going to ask us for which one is the start point and which one is the end point. So we just, we can do it different ways. We can just select from the model 51. And here we can select PT2, but we have to delete the specific point. If I hit OK, we can see that it's creating one line from this point to this one. And just to, for to see the difference, if I didn't delete the zero, what was happening it was that it was just creating one line from this point to this one. Okay. Let's delete that here. Okay, so we can have all our lines. So let's go to transactions and hit play again. And let's edit the line. I didn't name it. Let's rename it. Line of one is going to be L1. Okay. So now I'm going to I'm going to edit PT2 and I'm going to we're going to change these values of the Y translation. Let's change this in and we're going to start using one function. I'm going to introduce one function. It's called series. So if we type series 0, 10, 1 this means that GC is going to recreate 10 points from 0 to 10 and it's going to add a point each one unit. So if I change this value to 2, it's going to create less points every 2 and so on. So if we just hit OK and hit Apply, we can see that you see created 10 points. That's okay. And let's go to transactions and save this step. Next thing that I'm going to do is like explain, I'm going to use this point to explain what is the difference between one function called series, this is the one that we use, and the function called series by count. If I change this value into series by count, and the difference is like, it's going to create a series of points between 0 and 10, but it's going to give me this number of points. If I, if I only type here 1 and I say OK, and I hit apply, it only created me one point. So if I change this value for five and I hit apply, I'm going to have five different points from zero to ten. That's the difference between series and series by count. And the next thing that I that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replicate these points. We're gonna we're gonna change we're gonna edit point two PT two and for showing what you can do with a replication, what it what GC does with replication.
before let's go to transaction and save our transaction so the next thing that I'm gonna do we're gonna we're gonna change the value in the extra slash translation so we can have more points so what we're gonna do is we're going to delete this but what is important here is if I want to make a grid of these points using the replication is that I'm gonna start the replication degree in the 23 since this is the coordinate of this point and so I'm going to delete this I'm gonna type series by count I'm gonna start in 23 I'm gonna finish in 33 and I, and I want five points so I'm going to hit OK, and if I hit Apply, GC created a diagonal creating the points in each intersection of these two, these two values. If I want to have the, the, the entire grid of points, I need to use this tool, that is the replication style. So I have to click here, and then go in one point, and click in top of one of this and you see replicated the points so now I have the grid but also what is important here is that you can see the reason that I haven't deleted the lines is that you can see that GC is recognizing each point as individual and you can use it for creating whatever you want to do in this case is creating a line from this point to the other ones as well. Okay, this is very important. So now let's go to the, trans to the transactions and record it. Also, what is good to do is like change the names of these transactions. So you can just click in one and write whatever you want. It's good to in the beginning just to change the names of the transactions so you can start, you can have an order of what you're doing. So here was replicate PT2. Right. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to I'm going to create one line. Let's change this into a perspective view. I'm going to create a, a line using one option called by start point direction and length. This means that I'm going to create one line that is going to start in each one of these points and I want to go up. Yes, I'm going to use the Z direction, right? This is another important key in genetic components is the use of directions to create features. So I'm going to hit new feature. I'm going now to line and I'm going to choose by start point direction and length. It's going to ask me the start point. The start point I can select it also from here for the symbolic diagram. It's going to be PT2. The direction I'm going to use, this is our coordinate system, so I'm going to use the base CS Z direction and the length now I'm just going to type a random value. Let's hit 5, type 5, and let's hit OK. So now I created a line in each point using that direction, right? Something that I now I want to do is I'm going to create a graph variable so I can control the length of these of these lines and change it if if I change the value of that variable. So for doing that, the first thing that we have to do is create a variable. First, let's go to transactions and play it. And to create a variable, we just have to go here to the graph variable button. Is this black one? So we just have to click to hit and this is the window that it has to show up and we're gonna hit add 
Here is very important that you, when you name your variables, you use names that help you to remember the beginning why you were using these variables and what are they for. So let's just type length line length of lines. And I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna add a value. Let's hit ten and say okay. So here what is important, what is what is really nice is that if I click this option, limit the value to range, I can have this slider and change and if I change if I drag this this slider, the value of my of my variable is gonna change. So here I can I can edit what is the minimum. I'm gonna say that the minimum I own is gonna be one, one unit. The maximum is gonna be say twenty five. No, it's too big. Ten. And I wanna go one unit and just so now my slider is going to go from 1 to 10 every one unit, right? So let's go to transactions and hit play. So now what we can, what we're going to do is we're going to edit these lines using the edit feature button. We're going to hit it and we have to click in top of one of these lines. And we're going to change this value of length and we're going to delete it and the only thing that we have to do is we we can select from here some from the symbolic diagram the variable that we just created and if we hit OK and if we hit apply now we can see you know if you notice that the length of the lines changes so let's go to transactions, hit play. Let's record this step. And if we go to the graph variables and we move the slider here, we're gonna see that we can control the height of the lines. Right? This is a very useful tool, so you can start adding some constraints and some complexity, some controls for where you're modeling. This is a very simple tool, but it's really, it's really helpful. So let's go to transactions and hit play. So here what it is is just saving the change of the variable. And the next step what we're going to do is we're going to change the length of the lines and we're going to use now a, di a different function that is called distance and what distance does is it's going to calculate as its name say the distance between two objects and it's going to return that value and it's going to use it for for whatever that we that we want to so if we go to the top view and um, actually, you know, let's let's use this point that we already created is PT1. Let's use the distance between PT1 and PT2 to change the height of all these lines. And so we have to go here, edit, edit the line. And here where it says length of lines, let's delete the variable. And if we type distance, that's the name of the function. But something that is really nice, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this too now, is here, if we hit this green button, we're gonna see all the functions inside your nothing opponents, right? And the function, feature types, and a lot of stuff here that is that is inside the program. So if we don't know how to type it, we don't know how to 
how to write that function. We only have to go here and find it. So distance is here and we hit we have to hit insert. So now we can see that it not only write the function but it, it automatically type the inputs of what we need. So we need to create we we need to create two points so we can make work this function. So in, we're going to use pt1 and we're going to use pt2. We're going to hit OK. Let's close this one and let's hit Apply. What we can see is that each line is different since it's calculating the distance between this point and each one of these ones, right? And it's, that's, that's very nice, and we can have that variation in a very simple way. So if, now if we go to the, let's do it in the top view. Let's move this, this point. If we go here, move feature. can see that if you see change it automatically the length of these lines right so if I move it again now you can see in real time how it's recalculating the distance and automatically calculating again the length of the point of the lines so it doesn't matter in which plane you move it, it's going to create, it's going to calculate that value. So now the last part, last step of this tutorial, I'm going to use, I'm going to show how to change the visibility of one feature. Let's just go to transactions, hit play. And if we go and use toggle this this little button and if we hit in top of one of the lines you're gonna see that what it created is like now the these lines are only used for construction so that means that they're not gonna render it, they're not gonna be they, they're gonna show up in a different way but the reason that I want to introduce this capability of the software is to show that these lines also have are created from one start point and one end point. Right? So each one of these lines, if we make a zoom in, has an end point that we can use for building a feature, for building a surface of building wherever that we want. So if we want to create a, if we want to create a surface by points, we can use those ones and that's what we're gonna do. So if we go to a new feature, bispline surface and choose by points, it's gonna ask us for the points, which points we want, and we we can do it this way. We only going to select this point, and we have to delete all these ones, right? So we're going to use all the line of ones, the end points of them, right, to create the surface. So we hit OK, and we hit OK. You see, build a surface using these points the endpoints of each line. So let's go to transactions, save that one. So if I move again this point, this is going to recalculate the distance and it's going to adapt automatically the surface. Right?
Okay. So we hit save here. And well this is the last this was the last step for this tutorial. And I hope it will be helpful for you. And we gonna if you're interested in continue learning more features GC, please go to the next tutorial. Thanks.